Measures of central tendency are just a fancy way of describing um, things that you can do to represent a set of data. And so ones that you commonly hear are mean, median, and mode. So the mean is, another word for that is the average. And to find the mean, you add up all of the numbers that you have, and then you divide by the total number of numbers. Um, the median is the middle number. To be able to find the median, however, you have to put the numbers in order from the biggest or to the smallest or the smallest to the biggest, and then find the one that's in the middle. If there are two numbers in the middle, then you find the average between those middle two numbers. And then the last one is the mode, and that is the number that occurs most often. One thing to note about the mode is that sometimes there is no mode, and sometimes there is more than one mode. Um, so sometimes there's no number repeats itself, and you would say no mode. And sometimes maybe, for example, there might be three different numbers that occur four times, and all three of those would be the mode. The last thing that you hear sometimes is the range. And the range is simply the difference between the highest and the lowest values. It's not a measure of central tendency, but it is something that is used quite often when you are collecting data. Um, <clears throat> There's just a couple things to note about measures of central tendency. If you only have a very few number of pieces in your data, so for example, you only collect information from five people. If you have a small set of data and you have a very high or very low number, so let's say, for example, you had five people and you measured their height, and you measured the height of four grade 12 students and one grade one student. That one grade one student is going to be so far off of the other students that it's going to really impact the average. And so in that case, the mean or average is not a good measure of central tendency. In a case where you have a really small set of data with some extreme numbers, so one very high or one very low, it's actually a lot better to use the median. Again, mode might exist or might not be, but when you only have five numbers, it's not going to be very reliable. So when you have a small set of data, it is often better to use the median to describe the data. So let's look at some examples of mean, median, and mode. So let's say you had these um, scores. These are all distances in a frisbee throwing contest. So to find the mean, we're just going to add up all the numbers and divide by how many there are. So first thing we should figure out is how many numbers there are. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There are 20 numbers. So what we're going to do is add them all up and then divide by 20. So when I do that, I get 1168. Um, sometimes what I do also is I do it more than once just to double check that I added it correctly. So I'm going to take the um, sum of all those numbers and I'm going to divide it by 20. And when I do that, I get 58.4. And so that's going to be the mean. To get the median, I'm going to order them from smallest to biggest. As I do that, I cross numbers out so that I don't forget one. So for example, I'm going to do a quick scan and I think that 45 is the lowest. And then I'm going to cross that out. Um, and then my next lowest is going to be, looks like 46. And then there's a 47. And as I go, I cross out and I put them in order. Then there's a 48. Sometimes when you're doing this, you do make a mistake. And then you go, oh, shoot, I didn't see that one. And then you erase and you add one in. That's not a big deal. Um, the crossing out I find helpful because then I know I didn't forget one. So I would just keep going through the process exactly like this and cross out as I go to make sure that I don't forget any numbers. And I'm actually just noticed that I found a 50 there. So then what I do is I just erase that, no big deal. And I go back and I write the 50 in. And then I can write the 52 again. And I can fix that mistake quite easily. So I'm going to go through and do this quickly. And then when you, in a second, you're going to see it all filled in because I'm basically going to pause the video, fill them all in, and then restart. 
So here's all the numbers. Another thing that I often do is I double check and I count. If I know I had uh, 20 numbers, I count that I do have 20 numbers. And in this case, I do. So to find the mean then, or the median then, what I do is I find the middle number. And what I do, once they're in order, I cross out a small with a big, a small with a big, and I keep doing that until I find what's in the middle. And what I'm going to find in this case is there's going to be two numbers in the middle. So when there is an even number of uh, numbers in your data set, what you're going to do is find the average between those numbers or find the number that's exactly in between those numbers. In this case, the number in between those numbers is 56. To get that though, if I wasn't sure, I could add them and divide by 2. And then for the mode, what I do is I find um, the most frequent number and having them in order from biggest to smallest helps because I can look and I can see, okay, there's two 49s. Does anything else repeat itself? Yep, look, there's two 63s. So in this case, I'm going to have two modes. I'm going to have 59 and 63. So let's do another example. So again, to find the mean or the average, I'm going to add them all up and I'm going to divide by how many there are. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 13. So I'm going to divide by 13. So I'm going to add them up and divide by 13. And what I found was they added up to 1,032. I'm going to divide that by 13. And I'm going to round this one to the nearest tenth because it says to one decimal place. So that'll be 79.4. It was 79.384, but remember the 8 tells you to round up. Now, to get the median, what I want you to do is see if you can put them in order from smallest to biggest. Pause the video, restart it, and then you'll be able to see them in order from smallest to biggest. So now that they're in order from smallest to biggest, all I'm going to do is find the middle number by crossing out a big one with a small one. And in this case, because there's an odd number of numbers, the one that's in the mid middle is my median. And then for mode, again, I can look at the numbers and I can see, okay, there's two 75s, there's two 80s, there's two 81s, and there's two 82s. So I have quite a few numbers that are the mode. And so that's why often the mode is not always the best one to be using in terms of a description of your data.